Good morning. Morning. How are you? Good. Just dropped off my first uh, offered deposit or however it's called, but closed my, uh, well, I had my first uh, offer accepted. So. Oh, congratulations. Cool. First deal ever. Yeah. Well, on uh, buying and selling side, I, I've done rentals, but yeah, this is my first uh, like legit transaction. I, I would call it. That's pretty cool. No. Yeah, no, I'm pretty pumped. Yeah, just dropped off the check at the office and now I'm gonna head back to mine. That's awesome. Well, congrats on that, brother. That's always good news. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. That is cool. That is cool. How's everything else going? Good. Uh, I got others lined up. I just gotta wait for one of them to come back to uh, the country. They went to Italy, but uh, they're they're legit. That's and nice. A few others, so. so you're cranking. Yeah, and starting, you know, starting to see everything um, pay off. So all that everything's work starting off. to work. All the work you put in, right? It's starting to add up. Oh yeah, yeah. It's definitely. I I see everything starting to line up, and it's uh, it just motivates you even more. It's just like, yeah. Definitely. How are you liking the calls? Oh, I love them. They're extremely helpful. Um, You're glad to hear it. Yeah, I mean, last week was the mindset. My wife hated it because it just doubled down on how I believe. So. <laughs> My wife hated it. That's the best. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the good news, the good thing for you is, like, in our business, a lot of the stuff that we do, we're kind of – like you, you get to a certain level of, oh, I need to think bigger. And then you start to like figure out how to think bigger or how to leverage your business or how to build the systems or how to build the tools. And in your case, you're getting all that stuff up front. Cool. Yeah. You know, you guys have been awesome. Absolutely awesome. I, as a matter of fact, I talk to agents throughout the office and I'm like, Hey, you guys got to hop on. I'll share the link. Yeah. We I'm appreciate like, that. Are, I'm like, you guys are crazy if you're not hopping on, you know? Yeah, Definitely. You know, and you, and you get to learn from people who are actually in the business doing it, you know? Absolutely. Which is also cool. Yeah, I was just actually listening to, uh, oh, man, I don't know if it was you or your brother on uh, David Hill's podcast. I, I've been listening to his lately. I think we were both on it. Um, I think we were both on it. But, yeah, David Hill's demand. He Is he the team leader in your market center? Uh, Yeah, well, he's – one of the offices in um, Glastonbury. Okay, yeah. That, so. he, he's the man. Yeah, we were on his podcast. We're actually in his profit share, so he's a good dude. We learned a lot from him. Yeah, he's, he's a lot he's, of coaching and training, but I think he's busy being the TL now. So that's cool. Yeah, he does a lot of recruiting and all that, too. Good dude. Good dude. Yeah, solid dude. Yeah, some people hopping on the call. What up, Omar? How are you? Pretty good, man. How are you? Good, good, man. Good morning. How's business going with you? It's going pretty good, man. Just taking took another listen this week, so. Nice, nice. <laughs> it's always a good thing when you're taking new listeners. Yeah, trying to get a commercial property on the contract as well. So hey. we'll see how that goes. Cool, cool. Hi, Barbara. Good morning. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? Great. Hey, I'm, I'm really finding some uh, good leads through Facebook. Yeah, so hi, are you making those ads yourself? Um, that one, I, I think I sent you one of them that I had the, I don't know, that last one, 40-something leads. Yeah. I, didn't make, I didn't make that one. I paid for that one, but I quit paying because it's easy enough to figure out. So I just put a, um, another ad on for homes under, like, 298. I can't even remember what that ad was I sent y'all, but I had another one for homes under 298,000 yep. and I got 40, 43 leads and I just um, I just went through inspections and appraisals so I'll be closing on her, but um, I did an ad for a girl yesterday for an $880,000 home. She got yep. three leads for $1.78 each. How'd you do the ad? You got to show me. We got to set up a call maybe next Friday or something to, to show me how you're doing these ads. Yeah, maybe we should talk a little bit about Facebook ads. Yeah, we will. I'll put it on the yeah, next. The I'll put it on next week's ads. coaching call. Because I know I know Kyle definitely does a lot of stuff, but he outsources it. 
So maybe next week we could have Barb kind of show us how she does it, you know, maybe show us how to actually create an ad for those people that don't want to outsource it or pay for it or don't have anybody in their market that does it. Could work. Yeah, I'm still working on mine. Does anybody else do a lot of Facebook ads successfully? I just started my page and uh, I had one one thing where I, I had 700 people interact with it. It was insane. That's it cool. was uh, the home home snap. I don't know this. Yeah, this third party. They send us uh, articles. And I just put it up and I, I hashtag like Paris, London, everywhere. I was just hashtagging everything. And I think that's what got so much attention to it. Cool, cool. Yeah, we'll have to do a call on that. Um, definitely. Let's see if Kyle's coming out. I'll shoot him a text. Check this out, guys. The, the people on the video, we had our uh, we had our awards uh, banquet yesterday for, for Keller Williams in our office. So we won triple gold. And, uh, and then this bat, nice. this bat right here is the Louisville Slugger for the heavy hitters. They only gave – our office has 150 agents. They only gave out 10 of these. And uh, the funny story about this, last year, we were sitting at the award breakfast, and I was looking – and, and people got bats. They only gave out seven. And I was, like, so bummed I didn't get a bat. And then I looked at my brother, and I'm like, next year we're getting that bat. And little do you know, this year we got one of the – there's only 10 bats given out, so we got one. So that's cool. And the only reason I bring that story up is because for everybody on the call – Think about what you want to accomplish a year out, right? Because it's not just hopping on these calls and learning these tools and these systems and these strategies, but it's also implementing them, right? It's like you have to have a goal. Because if you're super purposeful on these calls and you're actually, you know, you have goals and you have things you want to accomplish, it's going to help you a lot. You know what I mean? It's going to help you a lot. And it's going to help you achieve those goals that you want. I think we're just waiting for Kyle to I'm here. I'm here. I just jumped on. There's, there's my guy right there. How you doing, Kyle? I'm well, guys. How are you? Good, good. So today we're going to talk about leveraging our business, and we're going to just build on some of the things we talked about in the past. One of the biggest things I learned from Kyle is how to leverage your business. A lot of times when people think about this, they think that they need a big budget or a big income or, you know, like they just don't under, they don't think they could do it because their business is not there yet. I'll give a good example. One of the things we did after we met with Kyle and he told us like, hey, you guys, there's certain things that make money and certain things that don't. And one of them was a home inspection, right? For us, that could be two to three hours. He's like, you could pay somebody. You don't need to put them on payroll, pay them 50 bucks to do a home inspection. And now you just got three hours of your day back that you could lead generate. So Kyle, let's kick it right over to you. When it comes to leveraging your business, what would you say maybe the top three or five priorities of things that you need to be doing? And what I mean by that is what should you leverage out first and what should you leverage out last? Like what, what is the goal? So the first, the first thing I would say that you have to leverage out, I think you hit it on the head. The first two or three things I would leverage out would be home inspections, appraisals, water meter readings, and smoke certificates. And why, why do I say that? Why? Right. So those, those things bring me no money. So if I can spend, think about anything, everything's about ROI, right? So if right. I can spend $50 to gain two hours back in my time, so I can utilize yep. that to, to go out there and get some more, you know, get some more business. My ROI, I'm with, if that $50 can lead to one buyer, that's a $50 investment for a $7,000 buyer. It's yep. a no brainer. So people get too bogged down with, Oh my God, I'm spending 50 bucks. Correct. You're spending 50 bucks, but you're making what you're able to make on it is much higher. You know what I mean? So it's like 50 to make, um, 50 to make 7,000. I'll do that all day long. So you have to think of it like that. You know, Absolutely. you can't, you can't look, you can't look at it like you're spending $50. It's, it's a sunk cost to, to make more money. Right. So you're getting three, two, two to three hours of your day back. Now here's the key here, right? Here's the kicker. A lot of people will go out, and not do dollar produ producing activities when they get that hour back. So what should right. you do with those three to four hours that you get back? What are the important activities we should all be focusing on? So though that those hours, guys, if you're just going to use those time and just sit in the office and go home and hang out or go eat lunch or go eat dinner, that's that's not a good. That's a waste of fifty dollars. But if you're going to take that time and meet new buyers, prospect, call new sellers, get out there, be at listing appointments, be out with buyers. 
that's a good use of time. That, that's the difference. Yeah, and what, what, what I learned from you, I guess, in everything that you're doing and everything you're trying to accomplish is so you get the most face-to-face -face time with people, right? Buyers, sellers. Always. Your own Always. Property. So everything else you're just trying to outsource. Anything that's not face-to-face, -face, anything that's not a face-to-face -face or initial appointment or initial meeting or something where I'm going to actually add value by, you know, meeting with someone, then I'm just going to outsource it. I don't need to be there. Why should I be there? Absolutely. Makes perfect sense to me. And it's actually helped us a lot in our business. Now let's go through that progression. So say I'm a new agent. I started getting some properties on the agreement. I outsourced home inspections in like water meter, fire reading, whatever I have in my market. What am I doing next? What am I going to leverage out next? What is the next step in that progression? Say that again. Say, say that now that I outsourced all of my home inspections and that, you know, yeah. I got my time back, I'm meeting for buyers. What should be the next thing that we leverage that we outsource? So the next, like I said, the next, the first thing's going to be home inspections. The second thing is going to be, um, you know, going to be appraisals and, 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 and smoke certificates and, and anything that's like a uh, second showing or anything that doesn't like that you don't need to be at. So like any, any administrative work, you should outsource that. Like offer forms, contracts, all that sort of stuff can be outsourced, and it can be outs outsourced in house, and you can pay per deal. Right, absolutely. And then, and then, as you outsource that, your business will obviously grow. The next thing we got to do is we got to leverage out some of the other things, and maybe it's the systems and the tools, you use, right? So, are there specific systems or tools that you would recommend people can use to, to grow their business? Yeah, I mean, the, the simplest, easiest way to outsource is, is to outsource with a virtual assistant, right? So that's the cheapest way if you're going to outsource on the back end. If you're going to outsource on the back end where you're going to outsource the uh, administrative part of your business, then uh, then that's that's the easiest, cheapest way. Um, outside, of, outside of outsourcing that part, I mean, you can find realtors in your office that can go ahead and take on this business and they can do this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So you find realtors and you say, hey, I'll give you 25 or 50 bucks if you go do this or go do that. Whatever, whatever thing is not making you money, correct? Correct, correct. Now, as far as getting some tools and some systems in place, I think a lot of people, a lot of people, because they don't have good systems, they don't do as much business as they possibly can do. So what would you say, what would you say some tools that they could use to do to increase their business? All right, so first of all, first of all, you have to, the biggest, most important thing is you have to get systems in place that you know how to utilize first. If you don't know how to use the system, then it's not going to be easy for you to teach it to someone else, right? So right. you need to make sure all your systems that you're utilizing, you know, whether it be back end, whether it be uh, inspection, whether it be appraisal, whatever that looks like, you got to make sure you know it. If you don't know it, then how are you going to teach someone else how to do it? Right. Right, so so the systems, I guess, the, the, to your point, the systems that need to be in place, those systems have to be thought out before you even go out in the field and you start outsourcing the stuff. Yeah. So you basically, what you're saying is you got to go get something. Like for example, a system we'll use Boomtown because that's a popular one as an example. We'll use Boomtown as a system that you get to help you follow up with with leads and to have all your contacts in one place. First, you got to learn how to use it. Then what you were saying is you can hire an ISA or a virtual assistant to go in there and work that system for you. It would the whole purpose of you being up with buyers and sellers more and more and more, correct? Right. I mean, what, you, what, your, ident what your goal should be, right? And this is what I, I say to myself all the time. My goal should be where I put everyone in a position to succeed. I'm, I'm relatively good at meeting people, closing a deal, getting from A to Z, getting buyers and sellers to, to kind of sign on with me. And, and move forward to, to get them to get to their, their final goals. So what does that mean? I don't want to be tied down with doing any of the back end BS, right? I need to be, I need to make sure that what I'm able to do is focus on what I'm good at. Whereas I let the other people, my admins, I hired admins to handle the back end. So I'm not bogged down with, with, with uh, minutia. And then they have a system in place. They know what to follow. So right now the way I'm, I'm set up is I have, an admin that just does scheduling all day long. Yep. All she does is schedule. Yep. I get a phone call, I get a text, I get an email. She knows to set up the schedule for, the, for buyers and sellers. That's number one. 
I have yeah. another admin that handles all listings. All she does is listings. All day long, she does listings, listing paperwork, listing docs, um, anything that relates to listing. I have another admin we just hired, I just hired, that does all she does is going to do emails. She's just going to do emails, okay? So that, that kind of rounds out my, my admins, right? That kind of rounds out my admins. And then the other thing, the other thing I do now on the outside, I've got guys that do smoke certs. I've got guys that do appraisals. I've got guys that do inspections. So I have two runners. Each one of those runners is trained to understand how to do a smoke cert, an appraisal, or an inspection. So you're not gonna, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend my time doing something that's not going to bring any value to me. Yeah. It's not going to bring any, bring any, you know what I mean? It's not going to happen. Which makes perfect sense. So for a newer agent who might not have those kind of resources to get all those people in place, I think one of the great ways you could do that on a smaller scale is to get something like a transaction coordinator in place. Have you used that, sir? Right. Or are you familiar with that? I, oh, that was where I was going last. So my last person that I just hired actually is a transaction coordinator. What they do is they charge me X amount per deal. They take it from contract to closing. Right. And that way you don't got to be bogged down with that contract to close piece, right? Yeah, but what you need to be careful of and what you really need to do, and it's very, very important, is you still can't step out so far where you lose that. You're going to lose that personal touch with your clients. So I still touch every client. I try to touch every pending transaction once a week. Yeah, you and do. And I just hit them, with a, I hit them with a quick text. That's impressive. And what would that text look like? Hey, just wanted to check in. How's everything going? If you have any questions, please let me know. Simple, super easy. I love it. And, and it's one, one text that I copy and paste and I send it to every single client. And for you, that, that could be as many as 100 clients at any given time. That's correct. So that, that can take, that takes two hours. Right, right, right. We use a transaction coordinator in our business as well. And I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said you can't lose that personal touch. So what we do, we're, our, we're not, we don't have a hundred people pending at any given time. So each and every one of our active clients that are under agreement, we will call them every Tuesday and we'll let them know, you know, if it's a listing, what happened this weekend, if it's a buyer, what happened this weekend. And when you get to so that's different. Uh, so that's different, also. So that's different. So those are different clients. Like those are my active clients. Yep. Every Tuesday morning, I check in with every active seller or not buyers because I have too many. But every active seller, I check in with on every Tuesday. Then on every Thursday or Friday, I check in with every pending deal. Wow. So you, are you making physical phone calls? Or are you just texting because it's too time consuming? I try to text unless they're buyers that don't text. Yeah. Yeah. So they they actually physically want to talk to you. Correct. Gotcha. So those are some great systems and some great tools that people can implement in your business. And what I love about what you're teaching too is it's very cost effective, right? They could take a transaction coordinator for a couple hundred bucks a month. You're, I mean, a couple hundred bucks per deal. You're only paying them when it closes and they take your transaction from transaction to close. Now that you can go out and build business. Let's talk about the mindset of people who don't want to spend money in their business because they're like, oh, you know, maybe my business isn't big enough. I have the time to do it myself. Oh, the mindset of, of, of thinking that way, that's the wrong way to think. So you're, you're not understanding the purpose of how, if you think like that, you're missing the whole point. Right. The point is not to, obviously I can do all this myself. I, I mean, I can do, I can do smoke search. I can do letters. Yep. I can do all that stuff, but it's not, I, I can use a ten dollar an hour person, a twenty dollar an hour person to do that and give and, and help help the economy, you know, move around. obviously that's that's one way to look at it. But at the end of the day, help my business grow because I'm not focusing on that stuff. Like looking at it and saying, Oh my god, I can just do that better. Yeah, no shit. I can do an offer better. I or I can do I can probably be great at an appraisal, but that's not helping me. That's not helping my business. Right. And it, you're also given, like you said, making the economy better just simply means you're giving a lot more people, a lot more. Opportunity, right? Yeah. And you're giving, honestly, man, you are, you're giving, like, I'm allowing, like there's two realtors in my office that I've helped out with throughout the last two years that all they do is help me with that stuff. To be honest, like I'm helping them grow. Like they wouldn't get this experience if they didn't have that. Right. And, and if you're sitting around as a new agent, you got nothing to do. This is a great opportunity to go learn about, a, you know, smoke inspection or home inspection or you know like doing all these things that come with a transaction that they'll have to do for themselves soon enough anyways when they get busy right 
That's correct. So you you know at at some now you're now when you get your buyers right or when you get your sellers, you go to do these things. You've already had so much practice and experience doing them with me that you look like a pro. Right, right, right. Because you've done hundreds of them even before you made it even have a deal. Correct. Absolutely, absolutely. So so we talked a little bit about outsourcing on a small scale and a large scale, meaning you know piece mailing it by getting a TC and a virtual assistant or what you do is you can, you can bring on an admin when you're busy enough. You basically outsource everything so you can spend more time in your business. We talked about some systems of hometown. Are there any other specific systems that you think can help people spend less time, you know, like doing, doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, but instead of leveraging it or outsourcing it to people, outsourcing some systems. Are there any good systems that you can recommend to people? I mean, the systems I utilize really. I mean, I use a I use a Salesforce.com um, iJungle CRM, which is helpful. It kind of allows me to, to to put everything in one space. And then outside of that, Google Calendar. To me, Google Calendar is just the best. Like you really can't. Like to me, that just makes everything so much easier. Everyone has access to the same thing. Everyone has access to understand what's going. Like to me, that's that's the ideal situation. Yeah, we, we've spent some time with you, and we see that you live and die by that Google Calendar. You look at it. You make your phone calls from it. You could use that thing almost like a CRM. And it's a free tool. And a lot of people don't understand that. You could, get, you could go pretty far with some free tools, right, Kyle? Yeah, Google Calendar is free. So what it allows me to do is I know where everyone is all day, every day. Like, yeah. I know where I know where my folks are that, are, that are doing these things and, and kind of covering this stuff for me. I know where they're at. So I... I don't really have, you know, it's, it's just much easier. It's just so much better. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just just by leveraging slowly, you get to build up a business. And, and even for some people who want to build bigger teams and they can't seem to think that they could do it, I really like your mindset of finding agents in the office that are in the business, that want to get into the business and, and using them as resources, you know? Correct. Correct. Absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, for me... You guys still there? Yeah, say that again. You broke off a little bit, but we got you. Yeah, now. what was it? What was it? No, but it wasn't a question. I was just saying it's a really great idea to outsource and rely on the agents that are in your office that aren't as busy. That that's a money move. For people that can't. Yeah, I mean, no, no doubt about it. Without a doubt, no questions asked. Um, you know, no doubt about it. Without a doubt, no questions. That is, that is absolutely the way in my opinion that that you can grow your business perfect perfect so it's about eight twenty now what i want to do uh, at this time is just open it up to general questions we got it we got a good amount of people to call they could come in ask kyle any question he'll answer it and we'll go from there so wh whoever wants to ask just ask away yeah hi kyle how you doing this is omar what's up man Oh, not much, not much. Hey, listen, I wanted to ask you in regards to when you're working with buyers, I know you mentioned that you have someone handling all your listing uh, paperwork and things things of that nature. When you're working with buyers and you're writing, uh, writing the offers, are you doing that yourself? Are you outsourcing that to somebody else? And if, you, if so, how did you train them to be able to write those contracts? So basically, when I work with buyers, I don't do offers unless it's after, after 7 o'clock at night because I'm on the road. So I actually have an admin, um, a couple of admins in the house that that's what they're doing. So they're, they're handling that, right? So I send them, for example, I get a buyer that I'm showing this morning. They want to, uh, they want to put an offer on something. Fine. I say to my folks, Hey, look, here's, um, here's the offer. Here's the buyer. I connect them via text, via email, whatever that looks like. And then we go from there. Okay. So I, okay. I make that introduction. I make that introduction. That introduction is made with um. That introduction is made with the, uh, with the buyer with my admin, and then from there I can just we submit the offer. I see. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Hey, this is Barbara. Good morning. Yep. Good morning. Yep. So, so what um. Do you ever get complaints about losing customer service with customers with having so so much of a, you know, a lot of people handling a case or do they feel better served? So, and that's, that's a good question. So what I do though is like, let's just say someone does an inspection, right? 
I let the buyer know prior to the inspection, hey, Joe Blow or Johnny will be there with you, right? Don't worry. That's all they do. They cover inspections for me. When you get done, you call me and we'll go over everything. So they're trained. I train my client to be ready when that inspection is done to give me a call. Hmm. Okay. Right? So so they don't feel like I'm not just leaving them there on a whim and like, oh, good, too, uh, too bad, so sad. I'll, I'll catch up with you some other time. It's okay. Let's, you know, let's do the inspection. And my pitch to them is this. Guys, I purposely don't go to an inspection. I purposely don't go because I don't want you to feel like I'm hovering over you. And I don't want you to feel like I am, you know, I'm pressuring you into something that, you know, that you may not want to do. So I let you formulate your own opinion. And I have someone just stand there to make sure they're my eyes and ears and nothing goes, nothing goes awry. That's exactly how I handle it. Okay. Good deal. Thanks. You're welcome. Anybody else got any good questions for Kyle? Just jump right in. Hey, Kyle, it's Nick from Connecticut. Hey, I got yes, a question. Uh, so people that um, people that use transaction coordinators and stuff, they charge, like, say, a $300 fee in the contract. What's your take on that? Again, it gets back to this, right? If I pay them 300 but I can go get two more deals in that time that they did that transaction – it's irrelevant. You can't look at it. So, for example, I do, let's say I do 600 deals this year and I pay $300 per deal. That's what, $180,000 paid out to these folks, right? Okay, fine. But if I pay them 180, but my business increased 20%, that's way more than 180, right? So, if my business went up, you know, 20%, 100 deals, 100 times 7, that's 700,000. So, I just leveraged myself 2x, 2.5x, right? My, so, I look my, at it my, like that. My my question's more so I know people that put that cost on the client. What's your take on that? Oh, 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 the pat pass it through. I don't do yeah. that. Um, you could do that. You certainly could. I don't do that. I tell my clients they're gonna pay a flat fee and um and, and that's kinda where it where it ends with me. All right. Now it's a good pass through. If you can pass it through, I mean depends on what you charge. Um, depends on what you charge for a commission or it depends on how you deal with your clients. I mean, that's going to be something you guys can only answer. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I don't pass that through. You know, I just kind of give them a flat fee and then go from there. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, yep. I have heard of that before, too, where, where clients charge the transaction coordination fee, where, where agents charge that back to the client. But, but so, you, so you don't do that, right, Kyle? I don't, no. Gotcha, gotcha. But but you think you're saying you could go either way. You can do that if you choose to. You cannot do that. Is there any pros and cons to either either process or either model? So if if you do it, just be able to explain it, right? If you do it, just be able to explain it in the sense that, you know, you're gonna have to explain to your client why they're getting hit for another fee, like what that fee is. If you yeah. can explain it and fit it in your business model, then yes. If you don't do it, um if you don't do it, then, you know, it is what it is. Just, just assume it when you charge a commission, right? Just assume you're going to eat that cost. Right, right. It's just, it's just the cost of doing business. And, and in, the, in the return, your, your business is going to grow because you're spending more time, less time doing paperwork and getting bogged right, down. Right, because I see, I see it as it's, a me, it's more of a me problem than their problem. So why should they pay for it, right? So it's kind of like I've decided to go that route. And, and I think Barbara – kind of hit the, the nail on the head there. Like you don't want to get, you don't want to water down your service and at the same time charge more money. I mean, that's not a good model. That doesn't work. So you got to be able to do one or the other. And, and, and if you're going to keep your service level high, you know, okay, fine. And, and then maybe you can charge it. But at the end of the day, if you're going to work, if you're going to pass off a million different things and then also charge more money for people, people are going to get sick of that. All right. Awesome. I'm going to post this video up on our Facebook page. I'll post it up on YouTube, guys. If everybody could share it, get more people on the call and just kind of let them know about what we're doing here. Call Like Nick was saying, it's a no-brainer. If you're in business, you're learning from the top guys in the business that are out there doing it. Kyle, any final words of wisdom you want to leave us on this beautiful Friday? I just think it's really hard for people to get out of the mindset of, you know, spending money 
um, on things that they can do themselves. And I think you need to look at it from different angles. And if you can look at it from different angles and understand that it's more about, it's not about spending money on things you can do. It's, it's more about leveraging your time, leveraging your assets and leveraging your business. And that'll pay dividends in the long run. In the beginning, yeah, you're going to have some excess costs, but at the end of the day, that's going to, that's going to formulate it to more business over time. And you're going to end up making more money as a whole. Correct. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, great call. Thank you, everybody, for hopping on this call. We appreciate it. We'll be back on next Friday with some new content. We might even talk about Facebook ads. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, guys. for hopping on the call. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Bye.